Hello everyone, my name is Brianna Curl and I will be your moderator for today's webinar on selecting PCB materials, electrical and manufacturing considerations. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please type them in the questions panel as they come up. We will have representatives ready to answer your questions directly during the webinar. This webinar will be recorded. The recording and the presentation slides will be posted on the EMA resource page. Today's webinar is hosted by EMA Design Automation and Sierra Circuits. EMA Design Automation is a leader in product development solutions, offering a complete range of electrical and mechanical CAD tools and much more. Sierra Circuits has 30 plus years of PCB manufacturing and assembly experience, which has made them the trusted source for end-to-end -end PCB prototypes. With that being said, I want to thank you all for joining us for today's webinar and introduce you to our presenters, Amit Ball and Matthew Harn. Amit has been in the PCB industry for 20 years. He is the Director of Sales and Marketing at Sierra Circuits. His passion is to empower tech companies to achieve their visions and change the world. Matthew Harms is an electrical engineer from Canada and has been with EMA as an application engineer since 2003 and as the application engineer team leader since 2018. At EMA, he specializes in design side issues pertaining to part management, circuit simulation, signal integrity, and power integrity, but is conversant in all facets of the ECAD design. Amit will start off the webinar with the presentation followed by the demonstration given by Matthew. Assuming we have time at the end, we will field some questions in a formal Q&A. Thank you for your attention, and now over to you, Amit. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, EMA, for hosting this webinar. I'm very excited about being able to collaborate both a little bit in theory, as well as the design tool and then actual manufacturing. I think it's uh, gonna be a great webinar. And so we welcome everyone's questions. There's a lot of material to cover, so if it's not covered today, uh, hopefully we could do more webinars with EMA and we'd be happy to address those things going forward. I definitely want to talk about PCB stack ups, uh, the basic properties of dielectric materials, which is a little bit of motherhood and apple pie, but still important. Uh, and then, you know, I break up the materials a little bit into different categories uh, based on signal loss and operating frequency. And then we talk a little bit more about copper foils and then, you know, some best practices in selecting, you know, your materials and some stack up considerations as it pertains to HDI. Okay, so PCB stack ups, uh, they're the most, as far as a manufacturer is concerned, uh, something that's super important in building a reliable circuit board, in building a cost effective circuit board, and then from an electrical standpoint as well, uh, building you know a circuit board that functions the way it's supposed to. Uh, so there are some general uh, guidelines, you know, you want to keep your stack up symmetrical. Uh, so that's uh, ease of manufacturing, so it doesn't warp or become a potato chip. Uh, and you know, we'll go into the next uh, the next slide, which is like, what are the ingredients for uh, PCB stack ups and PCB materials? So it starts off with prepreg copper foils and core materials. All are important in your design considerations. So prepreg is B stage material uh, that is tacky and allows for bonding of the different foils or laminates. A copper foil is, you know, obviously for your traces and your pads. And then your core material basically is prepreg that is already melted or C-stage. And there's copper foils already, you know, laminated to that core. So all those are very important ingredients uh, to your stack up as we'll talk about later. So each material itself has these thermal properties and electrical properties. So when you're picking a material, kind of the first considerations are you know, what are the, you know, actual properties of the material. Uh, you should definitely not stop there, uh, but this is a good place to start. So for glass transition temperature, it's basically where the PCB substrate material, you know, goes from a glassy rigid state to a softened state. Uh, so that's important if you're in, you know, higher temperature swing applications. So here are some basics, 370HR has a TG of 180, Rogers has a TG of 280. Uh, next one is the decomposition temperature. So basically at what uh, temperature the material decomposes chemically. And so you can see again, like 370HR versus Rogers. 
you want to make sure that if you're in a you know an application that needs to remove the heat, uh, the material can play an important role in that uh, application. So low thermal conductivity means low heat transfer, while high conductivity implies you know higher heat transfer. And then last but not least important is the coefficient of thermal expansion. It's the rate of expansion of a PCB material as it heats up, and so. This can be a very difficult situation if uh, CTEs of different materials, you know, don't match up. Um, the CTE of copper, the CTE of a uh, via fill material like a SANE or a silver fill, um, CTE of your component packaging and the solder joints, all that plays a role uh, for the life of the product. Okay, and then electric properties, dielectric constant, uh, DK or ER, which mean the same thing. So in this, it's really important to understand data sheets are actually not correct. They're a good place to start, but they're usually only valid for a specific resin content percentage, usually about 50%. And actual resin percentage in a core prepreg really varies based on um, you know, composition and it changes after lamination. Um, when you have a press out thickness and that press out thickness is based on your, your copper percentage. So there's a lot of things that vary the ER and the DK. So it's really critical for your manufacturer to help help you calculate that for your specific stack up. Okay, so loss tangent or the dissipation factor is the tangent of the phase angle between the resistive and reactive currents in the dielectric. The dielectric loss will increase with the increases values of the DF. So low values of DEF result in a fast substrate material, while large values result in a slow substrate. So, so the D, you know, DEF increases slightly with frequency. Um, so for higher frequency materials with very low values of DEF, it has very low variation with the frequency. So that's the value there. Um, signal loss and operating frequency. So this comprises of dielectric loss plus the copper loss. So signal loss causes signal attenuation. That's why this is important. Dielectric materials are made up of polarized molecules. These molecules vibrate in the electric field generated by time varying signals on the signal traces. This heats up the dielectric and results in dielectric loss, part of the signal losses. So again, signal losses increase with frequency. The loss can be minimized by using a material that has a lower dissipation factor. So copper loss is also part of the total signal loss. And a little explanation there is due to AC resistance of the signal trace and the applicable return paths, you know, you can have an increase with frequency due to the skin effect. So, so copper foil dielectric toothy interface provides the increases of the effective length uh, and thus increases the copper loss. So picking the copper material and the toothiness of the copper material has an important role to play in your total signal loss. So basically use uh, low profile copper, uh, copper foils. And so you can specify that to your manufacturer uh, if that's important in your application. So this slide is, um, you know, the correlation between signal loss and operating frequency. So signal loss or attenuation increases with the frequency. And, you know, with this data, you can see materials kind of naturally group themselves uh, together. You know, which material should, could you possibly choose from which would perform better um, electrically at higher speeds? That's kind of what this uh, is showing. So, of course, 370HR is the worst performing material here. Uh, and then, you know, you get down into the Nelcos and the Rogers, uh, like 